got to Camp T in the summer or the 96 season, what were the expectations, what was the attitude of the team? Uh, we were hungry. We, were, we felt like we had a really good team. It was the first year. I think that as a team, we made the commitment to each other in the summer to be committed, to stay, to work, because we hated how the 95 season ended. Um, we lost to you know, U of A, gave up two touchdowns with seven and a half minutes to go, and it's one of those things that still stings. And it's, I don't know, it's serendipitous because it's what led to the 96 season. So without that heartache, without, yeah. Uh, without, uh, you know, losing that, I don't think we, we win and do what we did in 96. So um, we were excited. Um, do you want, okay, we were excited um, and definitely wanted to prove that we could, you know, do what we thought we could, you know. As I've said in the past though, you know, you don't really know what kind of team you are until you go through some things. And we went through some things. So, you know, after Nebraska, that's one beating how we won against UCLA, how we beat SC, you know, so it's all of those things that developed that team. As a whole, we knew we had special people. What we were able, what we were gonna be able to do was dependent on how hard, you know, we kept getting better, kept working, all those things. The, the, the one, one at a time mantra was obviously everything in 1996, but do you feel as you go through a regular season undefeated that at some point you're invincible, that the ball's always gonna bounce your way? I mean, even subconsciously you feel that way? I don't, I don't think you think you're invincible. I think, again, UCLA proved that we weren't. Um, SC proved that we weren't. I think what we believed was in ourselves that if we needed to or when we needed to, we could find what we needed in order to be successful and it changed. Again, against UCLA, it was different than against SC. And a lot of people, you know, the SC game, we didn't score in the fourth until the very end um, to get it to overtime. Um, I think it was like a 90 plus yard drive. Yeah. So I think we believed in each other. And ultimately, and he hates that we, he always gets pointed out, but it starts from Jake, starts from the coaching staff, you know, and we played for each other. And when you do that, you're not so much worried you're confident that what you want to happen will happen. When you see such a potent rushing attack in the 2021 Sun Devils as an offensive lineman, you probably like what you're seeing. I always like seeing us run the ball. <laughs> you know, we were, we took great pride in it um, when we did it. You know, when we, I know it's the 96 season, the 97 season against Iowa, you know, 72 plays, 61 of them were runs. And it was just the mentality of the team. And, you know, there's a grit to that. You know, when you run the football, there's a grit to it, and everybody had it, our, our entire team. And again, that's why we were successful. I, you know, I think Pat was one individual in that whole team, and I think that's what made that team work is who Pat was, you become, you understand more of who he is. You don't, you know, 18 to 22 were kids. We, you know, you don't know what you don't know, and we didn't know a lot. Um, and then you look back and you have those conversations and you grow, and there's a more meaningfulness to it. As for all the guys, honestly, like in that season alone, you're not, it wasn't just like, look what Pat did or who Pat was. Pat was an important cog to, what made that team great um, and I think you'll find the more guys you talk to in ASU history and you know today great teams come from great people right that's just how it works and you know the vast majority of the guys on, on that team are great people so you know and he was you know a great person that is sorely missed for sure in the, uh, in the NIL era here, there's guys getting free cars, free food. What do you think your NIL deal would have been in your time in Tempe? Uh, I mean, I would have loved it. I, I would have just looked for free food, honestly. Um, I wasn't savvy enough back then to, to look for anything else. I think, you know, more notable names, Juan, Keith, Jake, Derek Rogers, they probably would have seen more fruits of uh, that labor. 
solely in the valley. I don't know that it would have gone any further. I mean, Jake with the snake and you're in the desert. I mean, I, you know, it's a natural fit. I'm happy for the guys on and you know, anybody who gets a deal and just makes college easier. Um, you know, I, I had to put on a lot of weight. That was a lot of food. It's a lot of money. So, you know, anytime you can make that easier, I'm, I'm all for it. It was, I mean, if you're looking for one moment, it'd be the UCLA game. And, you know, Jake said, guys, remember this field, remember this feeling, we'll be back here in January. And, every, and there wasn't a guy who didn't believe that that was the case. And we're like, all right, cool, let's go. And, the, and again, the one at a time allowed us to just focus on each week. You know, that's, that was our goal, but in order to achieve that goal, you have to win each week. And so that's where we focus. I would say after the UCLA game, though, for sure.